Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. And do you remember the time that Mexico got so butt hurt that Gwen Stacy was killed off in the Spider-Man comics that they created a completely divergent timeline in which she lived and she got married to Peter Parker? Well, you might want to go get a CAT scan if you remember that because it didn't actually ever happen. But close, close. So it's been a very, <laughs> very good day. I started using an app to schedule my day hour by hour. I got a week's worth of work done in a day, and I still have time to go outside and pick weeds out of the lawn. So anyway, first kill graphic novel, link is in the description. All the interior art is done, it's gonna start being lettered. Jawbreakers forever, there's 14 additional pages being added to it. The story was too rushed without them. Six of them are drawn, five of them are colored. Possible stars too. Coloring is restarting, new colorist, really great colorist. More about that later. So I was going to do a video about the writer of the latest Ant-Man movie, basically doing a Stuart Smalley. Uh, I'm good enough and people like me. So he read the terrible reviews and he's like, what? I just wrote a Rick and Morty episode into a Marvel movie. I mean, Marvel is trash comedy, right? But then he said that he went to the theater and people laughed and he knew he did a good job. So this story has been going around for a while and it was actually really interesting researching this. I had to go to like seven different sources because everyone was almost correct. It felt like every single person got one crucial aspect of this wrong, but overall it's a very interesting story. So like I said, this makes the rounds every year or so, and it looks like it really got brought up about four years ago, where this guy says, In the 1970s, publisher La Prensa did not believe Mexicans would read Spider-Man after Gwen Stacy died. They created 45 original issues after Spider-Man 119, Where She Lives, that have never been translated or reprinted. This is their marriage issue. Marvel needs to collect these. Okay, so... Time out. <laughs> this was a fascinating story, and I really wanted this story to be true. But it was actually Tom Brevoort, yes. It's just like that uh, article from The Onion. The worst person you know just made a great point. Um, it wasn't exactly like that. So Tom has a blog. He's actually not insufferable or a douche in his blog. You can see he actually likes comics. So what happened actually was that before Gwen Stacy was killed, a Mexican publisher who got the reprint rights contacted Marvel and said, hey, there is really, really high demand. There is a higher demand than just once a month. So can we write stories in between the issues? We will just sandwich them in. I'm sorry, we will just taco them in. So this was the 1970s. Marvel was owned by whoever cashed in some of their war bonds. Like, it was ridiculous. It was essentially fly-by-night. So they got the okay, which literally just might have been a phone call and $300 wired to Marvel. And they said, yeah, fine, whatever. We didn't know that Mexico was actually a real place. So what they started doing was a parallel timeline. It was the same story from Marvel Comics except for in between he would have other adventures and they would do stuff like repurpose art. They had the license for more than just Spider-Man so they would take this Captain Marvel cover, make it a Spider-Man cover. One of my favorite things about Mexican Spider-Man is they give blue highlights in his hair instead of brown, which in comic book visual language means he has black hair. It's Mexico, look, everybody has black hair. A couple of years before she died, they got permission to do essentially a parallel timeline. Extra stories in between established stories. It doesn't sound like they got permission, but they just did it. Where when Gwen Stacy died, they're like, no, nope, she did it. And then it went from a parallel timeline to a divergent timeline. I love this. I remember 20 years ago when they were like, Norman Osborn got Gwen Stacy. No, she, nope. No, he didn't. No, the two of them had, nope, they did not. Head cannon. I'm telling you, it will save you so many times. If something so egregious happens in a comic, 
you just tell yourself this did not happen. It's a beautiful thing. Now, Mexicans, being a cut above, headcanon was not enough for them. They had to print an actual divergent canon that went on for 40 issues before they eventually lost the license. But I absolutely love this. This makes me happy in my heart that a people very close to me, I mean, literally, they're like three miles away, said, no mas. No mas to these pendejadas. We're done. Gwen Stacy, she's alive. She's just a little shook up. She's fine. So anyway, before I go, First Kill Graphic Novel, thanks for watching.